I've taken a hand quilted log cabin and turned it into a fun slow stitching piece. Join me today and I'll show you step by step how I made it. Starting with the bunny template, adding slow stitching to the background, talking about how you can tell if colors go together, and then taking those colors and stitching them all around the edges with blanket stitching. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get started. I use both embroidery needles and milliner's needles. I like both types of needles, so maybe pick up both kinds and try them both and see what you like. Today I'm going to be using two strands of floss throughout the piece. I'm starting with a log cabin. This is a piece that I stitched by hand. So I built it from the center out, adding a piece on the side, turning and adding a piece on the other side and continuing like this until I had this block. And this block is about five and a half by six inches. I'm gonna bring in a template. I'm grabbing the bunny here and this is from my woodland set. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna pick up your own set or have a look at the other sets that are available. So I'm gonna take this bunny and place it on my log cabin. Oh, I'm really liking the way that that looks. So I'm keeping in mind that the outside pieces are wider than the rest because of seam allowances. And so I'm going to cut myself a piece of felt to use as batting that's just slightly smaller on all sides. And that's gonna give me the option to fold under those edges. So I'm centering it on the back and I'm bringing back in my bunny and I'm just checking where the edges of that felt is. I don't want my bunny to be right on the edge so I'm gonna move it in. And now I'm thinking about color. And I'm looking at this bottom piece of fabric and it has some nice coral colors, has a bit of yellow and some purple. So I'm thinking about pulling a coral color out. I'm gonna use that for the outline of the bunny. I'm bringing out an erasable pen. This is a friction erasable pen that I'm using. And I'm gonna trace the bunny and that's gonna give me a nice outline for stitching. This is heat erasable, so when I'm finished stitching, I can just hit it with an iron. Now before I stitch my bunny, I want to baste this piece onto the felt so it doesn't shift around while I'm working. I'm going to use regular sewing thread for that. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to work my way around out to the edges, taking small stitches on the front and larger stitches on the back. Now I'm ready to begin stitching the outline of my bunny and I'm using that nice coral color that I've chosen and I'm doing a simple outline. I'm leaving spaces in between my stitches. So it's giving sort of a dashed effect. You can see here. This color is showing up more in some areas than others. I can bring my bunny back in to see how it's lining up with the stitching. It's looking good to me. So now I'm going to bring in a darker shade of that coral and I'm gonna go around again and I'm gonna stitch another round for the outline of this bunny. You can see I've started here on the right side of the bunny up near the ear and that darker coral, that red coral, is really starting to bring out the outline. So I'm gonna continue that. And what's nice about this is now I have two shades in the outline which is always nice to do if you can have more than one shade of a color. It just adds a little bit of dimension. Now that I have my outline in place, I'm going to come in with slow stitching in the background. I've chosen a color that's going to be quite subtle. It's a very light turquoise color. I'm starting in the middle and I'm going to work my way up and down and I'm going to vary the direction of my stitches. I'm going to do several rows in one direction and then I'm going to switch and do several rows in another direction. You can see here that I've gone horizontal for a few rows and vertical for a few rows. I'm just going to continue that pattern, varying it all the way around this bunny until the whole background is stitched. So I've worked my way all around this piece, slow stitching in all different directions, and I've just finished this bottom row. You can see that it's gone right to the edge of the felt. There's some spots where it shows up more than others. 
and it's a beautiful layer of texture for the background of this piece. Now I'm going to pull out some additional floss colors that are inspired by the fabric. I already have my coral shades and my pale turquoise, and now I'm going to bring out some golden yellows inspired by that fabric along the bottom, as well as some purples. And if you take these colors and you arrange them in a circle or arrange them in rows, this is another way to decide if you like your color palette and all the colors go together. So here I'm moving them around, moving some darks and light, and I'm changing what color is beside what color. And this is a really good way to get a firm idea about your color palette and how it's working together. This light turquoise matches that fabric on the bottom, but it also coordinates with the other shades in the piece. And because there's so much of these blue and green turquoise shades, I can focus on these other colors as accents. So to start embellishing the bunny, I'm bringing out my two shades of purple and I'm holding them up against the ear area. And I like the way that the colors are looking there. So I'm gonna use these two colors. I'm gonna use two strands of floss and begin stitching in the ear area. I don't have a plan, just coming in, making some straight stitches inside the ear, adding some marks. I've decided that I'm going to fill this bunny in in more of an abstract way. So I'm not trying to create fur or anything realistic here. So I've added a few French knots and I've stitched a triangular shape using two shades of purple. And when I'm thinking about stitching inside the bunny, I've brought out a lighter shade of coral. I thought that might be nice in a few spots, maybe in the ears, maybe on the bunny's tail. So after adding that light coral color, I'm bringing in some of the yellow colors. I think the lighter yellow is gonna help the fluffy tail show up. So I filled in the tail, and now I'm switching to this light coral color, and I'm gonna add some marks on the fabric similar to these little white marks that are already on the fabric. And you can see here that the marks mimic what's already there, but it's in another color. And now I'm adding yet another color, this light gray that I think matches those white marks on the fabric. And I'm gonna use that to emphasize the line where the two fabrics meet, that lighter blue and that darker blue. Instead of trying to hide it or blend it in, I'm gonna bring attention to it by adding stitches all along the seam line. This stitched piece is a little different for me because I normally make a collage and have raw edges of fabric on the surface. And in this case, I've made a log cabin and all the seams are hidden. So it's kind of nice to take this opportunity to highlight these seams where the fabrics meet. And I'm really liking the effect that I'm getting here. Now I'm switching to a mid-tone coral color and I'm gonna do some stitching on the body of the bunny. And I'm thinking I'm gonna move in the direction that fur would. Again, I'm not trying to make this realistic at all. This is very folk art inspired. It's a very abstract interpretation. But I think it might be nice to have some little marks in the direction that fur would be. So here I've started, you can see, with these lines in this coral color, it's adding some texture to the bunny. So I'm gonna continue adding more stitches in the direction that the fur would go and fill in that entire area. So here it is filled in. That's looking really cute. And now I'm gonna do some more stitching on the body in this darker blue area. Now that I've done that, I think it's time that I wanna fold my edges under and start to think about what I want the border to look like on this piece. If you remember my piece of felt that I'm using as batting, I made it smaller than this log cabin. So I have this seam allowance that I can fold under to create my border. To fold under this fabric, I could iron it. I could also use pins to hold it in place. So I'm gonna start by bringing out my small iron and folding these edges under. The heat's gonna help that curling to begin. At the corners, I'm going to fold them in to create a nice miter. 
that's just going to reduce some bulk and make the corners a little bit crisper, although I'm not really concerned about anything being precise. And now that I've ironed under the edges, I'm gonna start doing some blanket stitching. That's going to secure down these edges and keep them at the back. And it's also going to be the beginning of my border. I'm using my darkest coral color and I'm starting near a corner, taking care to fold under those edges of fabric. This can be a little bit of a fiddly process, trying to hold down the fabric while stitching. And a pin or a clip would be helpful here too. So I'm using my fingers to hold down the fabric. I'm also keeping that thread in my left hand. I'm pulling it to the side so that when I come up with my blanket stitch, I'm coming up inside of that loop. So each stitch is connected to the next. You can see that that is securing down that piece of gray fabric and I can just continue along folding down the fabric as I go. Now I'm bringing in yet another color. It's a dark blue color that's in the top of the piece. It's also on that little snippet of zebra. And so I'm gonna use this color to continue my blanket stitching. I'm going to connect it to where I left off with my dark coral color. And I'm gonna do the same thing, holding down that fabric to fold it under and creating the blanket stitch. So here's my dark blue color all along the side. And you can see I'm using a pin to hold down the edges here. And I just remove it when I get to it. And I'm gonna continue around the piece. So here I've gone on three sides with this dark color. I'm gonna take that same blue that I've used to make my blanket stitch. And I'm going to stitch underneath the bunny. I'm going to take some uneven straight stitches and that's going to anchor the bunny down. It's going to give the impression that the bunny is on the ground and it's also going to bring that darker color down into that bottom part of the piece where there isn't that dark blue color. So here you can see I've gone across in front of the bunny, behind the bunny and under the bunny and that's a small detail that just draws a little more attention to my bunny. Now I'm gonna to return to my blanket stitching on the edges and I'm going to add lots and lots of color. So here you can see I started to stitch in between where my initial round of stitching was and I've added this pale turquoise color up in the right hand corner and I've pulled out another color. You can see that that pale turquoise has a lot of green tones in it and it really matches the fabric on the bottom and I'm bringing in this color that has more blue in it. It's very close to the color I'm using, but it matches really well with that blue central rectangular piece where I started. So I'm gonna use that color to add some stitching along the edges. I'm still doing the blanket stitch and I'm just stitching in between my other stitches and I'm placing the stitches really close together. So it's gonna give a nice satin stitch appearance. I've decided that I want the edges of this piece to be multicolored, and that's gonna tie all the different fabrics together. So I'm gonna continue this way around the edges, changing up the color, bringing in all the different colors of threads that I've used in this piece. You can see I'm adding more and more, changing the color, making it random, a tiny bit of color here, a larger amount of color there, just playing and adding more and more until the edges are completely covered in this satin stitch. So now the edges are completely covered in blanket stitching, stitch really close together, creating this beautiful, colorful satin stitch. I think it ties all the different pieces of fabrics together and makes for a really fun stitched piece. Because the slow stitching in the background is very simple and very basic, it's nice to have this extra detail on the edges. I hope this gives you some inspiration about what you can do with maybe an orphan quilt block or a piece of fabric collage that you don't know what to do with. Thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed making this piece. Until next time, happy stitching.